Hello. This is weird. I know what you're thinking. Lewis looks a bit more common than usual. But I'm Harry, and I'm going to take you on a quiz journey tonight. Um, let me see how the chat's doing. I'll wait till some more people get in. Hello, Yaroslav. Hello, Tom. God, it's weird having a one-way conversation. I'll give it another minute till 31. Put anything you want in the chat. As you all know, Lewis is participating in the chat tonight. So, you know, you have to compete against someone who has... Who wants to be a millionaire? Phoning uh, helpline on his credentials. So you don't really stand a chance. Oh, Josh Chalice. God, buy me dinner first. Yeah, if you're from a place called Haverhill, Lewis, it's not common. That's pretty... I don't know, Haverhill sounds like um, where someone would get murdered in Midsummer Murders. But obviously, they all live in Midsummer, in Midsummer Murders. But you get what I mean, like a posh place. Like, they don't get killed by, I don't know, a thug, they get killed by a priest or something. 31. I say let's get this bad boy going. Um, there we go, look at that. That's me face. Welcome to Harry's Lockdown Quiz. Uh, I'll go through all the rules, same as what Lewis does. Uh, yeah, forgive me if I'm a bit rusty, but these are big shoes to fill. You know, and Lewis talks to himself for multiple hours every Thursday. Mm. So he's used to it. Welcome to the quiz. So this is how it's going to work. For those of you unfamiliar, there are Google Forms in the description of the video as well as on the Facebook. And that is how you send your answers to me. If you want to be in the, for the chance of winning, you've got to send your answers for me. Send your answers to me so I can mark them with each Google Form. Uh, but there's five rounds, ten questions each. Each round will have a separate Google Form. At the end of each round, you will submit your answers, and I'll mark at half time and at the end. So that's one of the big breaks will be. Most points wins, and don't cheat, because if you cheat, I know some people who are very dangerous, and you will end up in the River Mersey by this weekend. This quiz is only possible with your donations to Lewis. It funds the quiz, and it goes to charity as well, the majority of the money. And Lewis has put in unbelievable graft over the last 10 weeks including extra quizzes that he didn't have to do. He, he helped out with the Samaritans quiz. Um, sorry, on my end, uh, he hosted that fantastically. He's done other charity quizzes. It, his work rate's been unreal, and I think he should be recognised for that. So make sure to float some money over to the PayPal, paypal.me slash LJ47. God, I feel like a budget DJ host. It's great. Prize, you've got to be in it to win it. And it is... 50 whole English pounds. Think of how many things you could buy with that. You could buy, you know, with the current inflation rate, one Freddo, maybe. Fantastic amount of cash. Last week's charity that Lewis raised uh, money for, Petals, the baby loss counselling charity, which I think are based in Cambridge, if I'm right. Fantastic charity, obviously. Um, This week, the charity is going to be uh, Ormskirk Hospital Children's Ward something that's quite dear to me my uh, my little brother frequents the children's wards often in Ormskirk Hospital and it's massively underfunded We, me and Lewis had a talk about uh, doing either a, a, a Black Lives Matter kind of charity or a Black Rights charity or something a bit more personal to me, everyone knows where they can go fund for Black uh, Lives Matter there's lots of uh, links at the moment and you know i'm willing to plug them and if i find some i'll stick some in the the chat as well if you want some there but i thought it might be good to promote something that is very highly underfunded at the moment that means a lot to me so there you go round one make sure everyone's ready everyone's in their uh quiz teams 
This round is called V for Vendetta, which is far too cool a name for a quarantine quiz round hosted by a uni student. Um, as anyone who frequents Lewis's quizzes will know, uh, his quizzes, the first round, they always include either a letter or a c- collection of letters, like a sound, uh, in all the answers. This week it's the letter V, one of the most uncommon letters in the English alphabet. Fun little fact there already with the knowledge. Um, it, the All the answers for each question includes the letter V anywhere in the answer. So... Could be at the start, could be the end, could be in the middle, who knows. Let's start this bad boy off. Question one. Actor Jason Statham, most notable for his role in action films, represented England in the 1990 Auckland Commonwealth Games. My favourite of the Commonwealth Games. But what event did he compete in? So obviously has to include a V in the answer. Um, But actor Jason Statham, most notable for his role in action films such as Crank and Fast and Furious, represented England at the 1990 Auckland Commonwealth Games, but what events did he compete in? Bit of a difficult one to start you off. I've tried to keep Lewis's quizzes are almost always, you know, on the harder side. There's some niche questions in there, then there's some easier questions sprinkled about. I've tried to keep it true to Lewis's quizzes. I've tried to put my own twist on it. There you go, that's question one. I'll read it one more time. Actor Jason Statham, most notable for his role in action films, represented England at the 1990 Auckland Commonwealth Games. But what event did he compete in? Just checking the chat. Uh, Phil Weaver, thank you so much for the first donation of the night. Massively appreciated from me on a personal level. Uh, Josh Chalice, Jack Raven and Michelle Jones as well thank you fantastic, we're off to a good start question number two most notable for his lengthy stints at Tottenham Hotspur and Chelsea which World Cup winner hosted a popular Saturday lunchtime programme alongside Ian St John I'll say that again Most notable for his lengthy stints at Tottenham Hotspur and Chelsea, which World Cup winner hosted a popular Saturday lunchtime football programme, bit of a mouthful, alongside Ian St. John. Obviously has to include a V in. Also, what's everyone been up to while the lockdown's been on? Obviously, every, you know, lockdown's kind of dwindling a bit. In recent days, people have been out to Formby Beach and left bags of rubbish there. Uh, you know, having a great time. So, float in the chat what you've been up to. Otherwise, it's just going to be one of those awkward si- uh, silences like when you had a weird, old, ancient relic of a supply teacher taking your year seven science class who didn't know what science was. I'll read it one more time. Most notable for his lengthy stints at Tottenham Hotspur and Chelsea, which World Cup winner hosted a popular Saturday lunchtime football programme alongside Ian St. John? Question number three. Peaking at number 12 in the charts in the US, which song by Jose Feliciano, got the accent on there, is the eighth best-selling Christmas song of all time? Try to sprinkle some clues in the questions. I'll read it again. Peaking at number 12 in the charts in the US, which song by Jose Feliciano is the 8th best-selling Christmas song of all time? Let's see what people are up to. Uh, Patrick Hodor, favourite Game of Thrones character, uh, is being sniffing his bum. Nice to know you've been having fun. Patrick eats their own. Uh, Yaroslav's been watching films constantly and preparing for... Uh, public affairs exam haven't we all Yaroslav uh, you know you just got to wing these things that's been my philosophy throughout life winging this quiz you know wing my education uh, wing my relationship you wing everything I'll read it again Peaking at number 12 in the charts in the US, which song by Jose Feliciano 
is the eighth best-selling Christmas song of all time. Question number four. Finishing third in his respective series of Love Island, which former contestant currently plays basketball for the London Lions? Finishing third in his respective series of Love Island, which former contestant currently plays basketball for the London Lions? Now, he does have a second name. I'll give you the point if you get the first name, I think. Maybe. Unless I really want to be cruel. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, fun little fact about this person. He used to play basketball in Greece, Spain, France and Italy as well. And then he went on Love Island. And then some team snapped him up. Or well, the London Lions snapped him up. Purely for PR basis, probably. Because he can't have been that good if he moved to Love Island. Tom Ives has been watching Money Heist and Killing Eve. Fantastic programs. Adams asked a, a political question as well. Which of Henry VIII's wives would do the best in the Tour de France? Oh, uh, Joan of Arc, my favourite, one of Henry VIII's wives. She's got powerful legs. Uh, Tom v, it was Tom V. Fury. Gareth with some smart ass comments. Not going to read them out. Question number five. Sung by the Beatles in 1968, the song Helter Skelter, great song, with its droning guitar and pounding drum, is often cited as the first song of what music genre? Sung by the Beatles in 1968, the song Helter Skelter, with its droning guitar and pounding drum, is often cited as the first song of what music genre? Getting on the bevs to get me through this quiz. I'm enjoying the quiz. You know, you've got to keep hold of the nerves. I've... Yeah. Oh, got some more donate donations, sorry. Uh, Lewis has been watching a lot of Simpsons as well. I got my uh, nine-year-old brother into the Simpsons during this lockdown, and it's possibly the best decision I've ever made. We watched uh, Who Killed Mr. Burns together. That was great. Uh, but thank you to Charlotte Westdyke and Izzy Ryder for your donations and Joe Harker as well thank you um, if I do miss out any donations while the quiz is on please give me a shout and I will shout you out um, Rodri's made a joke there that I, has gone over my head because I'm a bit slow tonight I have been ill as well. So, you know, give me some slack. Question number six. Which Eastern European country's most famous celebrity exports are Melania Trump and Talking Tom the Cat? Which Eastern European mo country's most famous celebrity exports are Melania Trump and Talking Tom the Cat? Arguably, Talking Tom was bigger. Um... You know, he's got his own TV show now. I don't see Melania on the telly. Lewis has got an opinion. We'll keep this discussion going. If you think who who's which one of Henry VIII's wives would do best in the Tour de France, give your opinions down below. Um, I think that Catherine of Aragon would do best at the Tour, being most used to the hilly region of northern Spain, much better than Cleves, certainly. Fantastic, Lewis. See, you've got to think, think, use your noggin. You've got to think logically with these ones. We chatter to it sideways. There we go. Austin Browse has made pasta from scratch for dinner tonight. Very impressive. And Patrick Hodor, his fingers are bleeding. Uh, I'd hate to ask what you, you did to make your fingers bleed, so I'm not going to. I'll ask that one again, actually. Which Eastern European country's most famous celebrity exports are Melania Trump and Talking Tom the Cat? Question seven. Which song, a cover of a song from a 1939 film, you all know the film, reached quadruple platinum status for Hawaiian singer Israel Kamika Vovele? <clears throat> 
Kamaka Vivale. Which song? A cover of a song from 1939. From from a 1939 film reached quadruple platinum status for Hawaiian singer Israel Kamaika Vivale. I said it perfectly before I did the quiz. Now I can't say it at all. More commonly known as Iz. Uh, a fantastic artist. Uh, I won't give too much away. I'll save all my tidbits about him until the answers. But if you know of Israel Kamaka Vivovele, you'll get this question. And you will you will know him if you ever see him. He's a bit of an unmissable character. Question seven, I'll read it again. Which song, a cover of a song from a 1939 film, reached quadruple platinum status for Hawaiian singer Israel Kamika Vivele? Question eight. Which American magician... Described by Forbes as the most commercially successful magician in history, took his stage name from a Charles Dickens book. Which American magician, described by Forbes as the most commercially successful magician in history, took his stage name from a Charles Dickens book? Let me read through the chat again. Uh, Phil Weaver, not not Anne Boleyn, she lose by a head. Great job there. I know Catherine Parr was a top golfer of the time, but I'm not sure about cycling. God, I, I, some of these jokes are going over my head, but it's all right. Catherine Parr would be good because she is she's the one who survived, so she isn't dead. Very good point by Freddy. Um, some say that you do have to be dead. Uh, do, do you have to be alive to win the Tour de France? Although Bradley Wiggins was perpetually dead behind the eyes, and he won it. So... Anne of Cleves has V in though, so she'd gained bonus seconds in this round. <laughs> it made me laugh, well done. I'll read it again. Which American magician described by Forbes as the most commercially successful magician in history, making that dollar, took his stage name from a Charles Dickens book? Question nine. Despite allegedly, allegedly originating in Britain and the Netherlands, which cabbage is named after a region in France? Despite allegedly originating in Britain and the Netherlands, which cabbage is named after a region in France? If anyone's got any film or Netflix recommendations as well, love those in the chat. Always like that. Started watching the Epstein doc today. Uh it's it's not for light viewing really i was trying to eat uh chips and a bean burger and it was just a lot about jeffrey epstein having like creepy art on his, his walls so but yeah gives you recommendations question nine despite alleg allegedly originating in britain and the netherlands which cabbage is named after a region in france and it has to have a v in it just a reminder has to have a v in it question 10 what Latin phrase, anyone from down south, is posh enough to use Latin and speak Latin on a daily basis, so they're all automatically at an advantage. But what Latin phrase attributed to Julius Caesar in his letter to the Roman Senate is used to refer a swift, conclusive victory? What Latin phrase, famous Latin phrase, attributed by, pardon me, attributed to Julius Caesar in his letters to the Roman Senate is still used today to refer to a swift and conclusive victory. If you have any questions uh, about the questions that I've read out, um, rewind the stream and work them out for yourselves. I'm not your mum. Uh, but yeah, what Latin phrase attributed to Julius Caesar in his letters to the Roman Senate is used to refer to a swift, conclusive victory? Let me check on the chat. BHA today saying, is it crikey? It may well be. I hear a lot of people down in the Kent area do say crikey quite a bit. Uh, Adam's still arguing about cycling headlessness 
Cycling head cycling headless would be better aerodynamically and weight wise. Uh, yeah, but how do you wear your helmet? Can't race without a helmet. Anne of Cleves has oh read that one. Did Arm Armstrong win Tour de France? Uh, he doesn't have a V in him. Uh, Armstrong, I think Armstrong did win Tour de France, and then it was all nullified because he was majorly on those steads. Um, but he did have a little yellow on wristband, so that's good. Under the sun, I've not seen that Yaroslav. Lewis, what I watched Ali, D, Ali G in the house last night for the first time in a long time. I did enjoy it, but you know, I don't know, Lewis. Please tell me. It is a f I, I love Ali G. That that video is continually floated about about him, um, saying that Mel C gets with a fella from Scunthorpe United because she's not one of the best looking Spice Girls. And I think Sasha Baron Cohen is probably the best character actor of our time. Ooh, love that from Tom I've been watching the Jurassic Park movies. Right, that is the end of round one. So far, so good, I think. I've not croaked or died or smashed anything, and my stream is still going. End of round one. Make sure you've answered every question. Spelt your team name correctly and pressed submit. Make sure you think about your team name. I'm not having people changing the team names midway through. You want, one you pick in round one, you're sticking with it. Because I've changed team names midway through. And it just makes you feel a bit scummy. So make sure you pick the right one. Uh, all in the Google Forms down in the description. Uh, and then press submit. And yeah, I'll wait patiently for your uh, responses so I'll see you in a bit
Party people in the place to be. I've got about how many responses have I got so far? Thirty-six responses. I'll wait till nineteen. Oh, that's something. Are people clapping for the carers tonight? Do I leave a little gap for people to clap to, for the carers tonight? Tell me in the comments if you are, because I know people have said that they're going to stop it. Uh, it depends what area you live in, really. No one really does it around here anymore. I don't think. Um, but tell me in the comments if you want me to stop it. Um, but yeah, I'll give you till 8. Uh, White Lines is meant to be good. I've not seen it yet. Packed a huddle with some of the obscenities. Um, Secrets of the Skinwalker Ranch. Never seen that. Might give it a go. Press from the BBC is a, is a class series. I'll give that a go too. Some riveting commentary here from yours truly. Uh, nice hat. Thanks, Yaroslav. I got it from Ofsted. Not Ofsted. Ofsted didn't come into my school and, uh, you know, inspect and give me this hat. I got it from... Oxfam, that's it, for about three quid, and it's the best, best amount of money I think I've ever spent. Um, if everyone's stopping, then I'll wait till eight o'clock, and I'll get this show on the road. But I think everyone's got, I think 36 responses, I think is... Uh, yeah, what people are, like how many people we've got going. Let me try and send this over to my glorious assistant. There you go. Right. Let's get this started. My mum also did come up, who is kindly taking part to support me because she's a good mum. She went, you're drinking too much. You're too nervous. Um, so sodder. I, I do what I want. Break the rules. Uh, there we go. I'm still getting to grips with it. I'm sorry. Answers for round one. Question number one. That was actor Jason Statham. Most notable for his role in action films. Represented... England in the 1990 Auckland Commonwealth Games, but what event did he compete in? Um, some shouts for volleyball in those Google Forms. Some shout, one shout, I think, for pole vaulting. Um, 
it's none of those. It's diving. Who would have thunk it? Fun little fact about Jason Statham as well. He went to school with Vinnie Jones and he got Vinnie Jones into acting. Allegedly. Question number two. Most notable for his lengthy stints at Tottenham Hotspur and Chelsea, which World Cup winner in 1966, he won the World Cup, hosted a popular lunchtime, Saturday lunchtime football program alongside Ian St. John. That was, of course, Jimmy Greaves of St. and Greavesy. Uh, a bit before my time. But, you know, there's some old farts in the comments. Question number three. The clues are in the questionnaire. Peaking at number 12 in the charts in the US, which song by Jose Feliciano is the 8th best-selling Christmas song of all time? Jose Feliciano, a Puerto Rican singer, that is, of course, Feliz Navidad. I'm not going to sing it because my singing is so good, this stream might get struck down for copyright. But, you know, you've all heard the song, whether you know the name or not. Question number four. Finishing third in his respective series of Love Island, which former contestant currently plays basketball for the London Lions? Tall fella, uh, fan favourite when he joined Love Island, uh, is of course Ovi Soko. I'm going to be kind, I think, if you've put Ovi, I'll give you that, that's what he's known as. Uh, but his full name is Ovi Soko. Question number five. Sung by the Beatles in 1968, the song Helter Skelter, with its droning guitar and pounding drum, is often cited as the first song of heavy metal. Bet you didn't know that. If you ever hear Helter Skelter, if you've not heard it, I mean, I'd suggest listening to it, because it's a fantastic song by a fantastic band who are from a fantastic city with purple wheelie bins. Um, but yeah, it's blatantly obvious. It's a bit toned down to the heavy metal of today, but a fantastic song question six which eastern european country's most famous celebrity exports are melania trump and talking tom the cat that is i mean technically you had two eastern european countries to choose from uh both beginning with slow slovenia and slovakia it was of course slovenia i mean not of course it could have been slovakia can't think of any other eastern european countries with a v so it's a bit of a coin toss that question question Number seven. Which song, a cover of a song from a 1939 film, reached quadruple platinum status, which is over four million, I think. I think that's how they... Over four million... In, in the US, I think it's over four million records sold. Multi-platinum song for Hawaiian singer Israel Kamika Favelli. Uh, the 1939 film was The Wizard of Oz. And the song is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. If you just put Over the Rainbow, you get the mark. Because it was marketed and released through both versions. Um, but yeah, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Fantastic iteration. Uh, sadly died at 32, Israel Kamakavavali. But give it a listen if you get a chance. Question number eight. Which American magician, described by Forbes as the most commercially successful magician in history... Took his stage name from a Charles Dickens book. The Charles Dickens book was that big long one that ends in David Copperfield. Because it's David Copperfield. The V there. In between the da and the id. Just in case you didn't see. Question nine. Despite allegedly originating, originating in Britain and the Netherlands, which cabbage is named after a region in France? Only two cabbages I can think of are Savaloy and Savoy. Or is Savaloy a lettuce? If it is a lettuce, it doesn't matter because Savoy is the cabbage. And that one was Savoy. Question 10. What Latin phrase attributed to Julius Caesar in his letter to the Roman Senate is used to refer to a swift, conclusive victory? Wants to end on all fireworks... Uh, for this round, it's the V round, so all the V's matter. It's Veni Vidi Vici, transcribed, I think, on a lot of statues of, of Julius Caesar, uh, but common Latin phrase. Let me look at the chat, see what everyone's doing. Uh, oh, Lois, 
and the Starla clan, thanks for the donations. And Sam Penn as well, thank you for the donations, much appreciated. Um, can you tell us why you have a black eye in the photo? Well, I've had numerous black eyes. Uh, that photo, I was playing in goal for my five-a-side team, and there'll be some members of the five-a-side team, I think, watching the quiz. And I got walloped in the eye within the first minute of moving into goal. Uh, cracked my skull. I've got a scar there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. The, the camera quality is pretty wank. But the, yeah, got a scar there. Nose was broken quite badly. Um, completely concussed. Uh, yeah, and then the day after, my uh, friend was playing in a cup final. Uh, for his football team and uh, I had to convince my mum that I wasn't still concussed the next day so that I could go to this game uh, and he ended up winning and I got a photo with him with the trophy with my eye completely shut I didn't see much of the game I could only see the, the goal end from when he scored which was ideal but uh, yeah that's where I got the black eye it could have been Latvia Kosovo Slovenia Slovakia you're a smart ass so uh, his full name's Ovi Paul Soko. Fun fact: You might not want to throw out those fun facts too much because that screams of looking on Wikipedia. Adam James asked, "Why the hell are you in my room?" Yep, I'm in. My, I'm in his room. He's my brother, uh, and his room's bigger. So sod him. Uh, Savoy sounds like posh wine. Maybe so, Yaroslav. Uh, I wouldn't drink it. Bosnia and Herzegovina, or Herzegovina, yeah, that's got a V in it, up the anti grays right, perfect, right, I'll stop rambling, question, round number two, sorry, uh, a fan favourite of Lewis's quizzes, the answer mashes, uh, the answer mash round, this round is to do with capital cities, I'm going to show you an image of a skyline of a city with the name of the country, over it um and I'm, then i'm going to ask you a general knowledge question and you have to merge the two answers together so for example uh the capital of the united kingdom there's a picture of the capital of the united kingdom which is london for anyone who doesn't know and named after an italian sculptor what is the name of the bow staff wielding ninja turtle that wears purple uh so the answer to the question is obviously donatello in London and Donatello makes Londonatello. So you can get the start of the answer from the back end of the country and vice versa. Um, but obviously they're a lot harder than the capital of the United Kingdom because I want to challenge you. I want to push you. You don't get anything in life if it's given to you. Question number one. Capital of Finland and quite apt, which Finnish racing driver, nicknamed the Iceman, won his first and only F1 championship in 2007. Which Finnish racing driver, nicknamed the Iceman, won his first and only F1 championship in 2007. Let's see what the chat is saying. Yeah, I've said mashed potato. Not entirely sure what that was relating to, but I think that's something that we can all live by. Mash. Oh, okay. J J Adam's cleared up that he knows Ovi's middle name because he's been rewatching Love Island, which I think a great show to rewatch. Um, great plot. James Robinson has a tiny little pip head. Just wanted to put that out there. And um, I am in his room and I could vandalise it. So maybe watch what you're saying. You little pee head. Any stand-up show recommendations? Um, I've got plenty, Yaroslav. Uh, he says as his mind goes blank. Any of Bill Burr's on Netflix is phenomenal. Bill Burr is a fantastic comedian. Uh, Paper Tiger is a good one. And... Um, Oh, I can't remember the name of his other one. He's got another one that's in, uh, entirely in black and white, which is phenomenal. Um, Adam Rowe, mass, a huge recommendation. Adam Rowe, 
uh, a Liverpool comedian has just released re- in the the other day a full hour long special called Club Comic on YouTube that is free to watch for everyone, and it is hilarious. So I think that's a good recommendation, Yaroslav. Uh, Yes, James Acaster's repertoire as well. Uh, if you can binge all of repertoire in one go, I'd suggest it. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. Question number two. Which former Neighbours actor divorced from Miley Cyrus in January of this year? And the capital city I'm looking for is the capital city of Brazil. Which former Neighbours actor divorced from Miley Cyrus in January of this year, 2020? And the capital of Brazil... The capital of Brazil comes first. They all come first. Um, I don't know why I read it the other way around. Fancy a change? I'm just going to take my jumper off. I'll read that one again. Question two. With former Neighbours actor divorced from Miley Cyrus in January of this year and the capital of Brazil. I'm looking for mash those two answers together. Question number three. The capital city of India. And I'm going to be very stringent with this. Capital city of India. Pardon me. And credited with inspiring the revival of the Olympic Games. Which age-old sporting games include the include events such as the caper toss and weight throw credited with inspiring the revival of the olympic games which age old sporting games include events such as the caper toss and weight throw the olympic games obviously revived in the late 1800s um yeah and i think no, I'm not going to say anything else. I can't give too many clues away. Get your nips out, you little piehead. I might just start cutting shit up in his room. Yeah, I can't get this one done. Question... Number four, beating One Direction in the process, which Liverpoolian singer finished runner-up in the 2010 series of The X Factor? And I want you to mash that at the end of the capital city of Croatia. So the capital city of Croatia, and beating One Direction in the process, which Liverpoolian singer finished runner-up in the 2010 series of The X Factor? fantastic country Croatia I'd recommend if you get the chance to go definitely go I went to a little island off the coast of Split um, and it was unbelievable it's the best place on earth I've ever been to Croatia Matt the whale said it's Kabatos I was pretty sure it was Capertos, but it might be Capertos. So, I don't know, go off either of them. I mean, you could have maybe not told me and everyone else got it wrong, but thanks for helping me out, Matt. I might check that out. It is, in fact, Capertos. So that one, it's like you're smelling on my part, I'm sorry. Thank you, Matt. The whale. <laughs> a mammal who knows more than me about sporting events question number five the capital city of Uruguay Uruguay uh, as Homer Simpson calls it and reaching number one in 11 countries what is the name of the Buggles' only number one hit song from 1979 so to clarify that's the Buggles' only number one hit and it was happened to be released in 1979 it wasn't just like they only got one number one hit and they considered that as a poor year so 
capital city of Uruguay and reaching number one in 11 countries. What is the name of the Buggles' only number one hit song from 1979? Good year. Uh, if there's any donations I've missed, Victoria Ives, thank you so much. Tony Brown, Linda Quinney, uh, thank you so much for your donations. And Helen Wilson, thank you so much for your donation. Another question from Adam, keeping me on my toes while the quiz is going on. If y equals 2x plus 4, is the coefficient of y less or greater than the 1974 FA Cup final? Uh, the same. Question number 6. Bit of a difficult one. I'm trying to crank it up a bit the capital city of zimbabwe and starring ellen burstein or burstein burstein and jared leto which critically acclaimed film from 2000 tackles heroin addiction wants to make it specific that it stars those two because you know maybe cat in the hat from 2000 tackles heroin addiction but I want the critically acclaimed one. And I want that merged with Zimbabwe, the capital city of Zimbabwe. Ooh, hey LJ, cannot enter into question four, needs a number. Hmm, I'll try and sort that out. Because uh, I don't know what's gone on there, I'm very sorry. I might be able to change it while everyone's on. There we go. Hopefully. See, the problem with Google Forms is that Google Forms finishes the question for you when you don't ask them to. So I have saved that now hopefully that's right what i'll do i'll float the link in the description does that work there you go um but i don't know why it's done that question number seven Uh, the capital city of Australia and seen as the messianic figure of Rastafarianism what was Hail Selassie I, the emperor of Ethiopia otherwise known as so seen as the messianic figure of Rastafarianism what was Hail Selassie I, emperor of Ethiopia otherwise known as and I'm going to check up on the google form uh If people can refresh that Google form, hopefully that works. Um, and if it, if I can't figure out a way to fix it, then we might just have to skip that one. But hopefully it can get sorted. Tell me if anything does get sorted in the chat. Question 7, capital city of Australia, and seen as the messianic figure of Rastafarianism, what it was Hail Selassie I's emperor of Ethiopia, otherwise known as? What was Hail Selassie, Hail Selassie I's other name? Question number 8, the capital city of Jamaica, Jamaica me crazy, and played by Margot Robbie in her biopic film, which former US ice skater was banned from competing after an attack on her competitor there we go toby shaw says that the google form is working if you open a new page i am can only apologize for the error there um and i'll make sure i check all the other google forms in the break just in case they decide to embarrass me again 
But question eight, the capital city of Jamaica, and played by Margot Robbie in her biopic film, with decent film as well, which former US Olympic ice skater was banned from competing after an attack on her competitor? Question number nine. The capital city of Nepal, and despite abstaining from royal duties, Meghan Markle holds what royal title? Despite abstaining from royal duties, Meghan Markle still holds what royal title? Despite the fact she does no royal visits. Um, yeah. And I want you to mash that on the back end of the capital city of Nepal. And lastly, question number 10. The capital city of Denmark... I've tried to make question 10 a little lighter, just in case some of those were quite hard. Question 10, capital city of Denmark, and containing the stories of Noah and Abraham, what is the first book of the Bible? Easy for anyone who went to a Catholic high school like I did. Capital city of Denmark, and containing the stories of Noah and Abraham, what is the first book of the Bible? Again, if you have any more questions about anything, it doesn't have to be about the quiz, float them in the chat. Keep the conversation going. We're aiming to have a good time. You know, and a long time. It's quite a long quiz. Me trying to find the bottle opener on a Swiss Army knife. James made me laugh, so I had to block him. Uh, Cam and the Minty Chocolate Mandem, thank you so much for your donation. Um, yeah, I mean, the, their team seems to be always the bridesmaid and never the quiz winners. Uh, so hopefully you can win it this week. Yep, question 10. Denmark, capital city of Denmark, and containing the stories of Noah and Abraham, what is the first book of the Bible? And it is not Philosopher's Stone. Ugh. If you if you are able to refresh or open a new page for that Google form, then it should fix it. Because uh, I have edited it. So try... Um, yeah, and I'll put instructions in the chat for people who've got the... Uh, video muted but that's the end of round two make sure you've answered every question spelt your team name correctly the same as the first time and press submit i'll try and figure out how to fix um the google forms but go ahead uh you know it's not going too bad it's about time we had a blip in it and yeah i'll give you a couple minutes to sort that out while i try and sort the stream out all right in a bit
Hello. I can only apologise about the um, Google Form issue. Uh, and I'll give everyone extra time. I just wanted to come on and... I don't know if anyone had anything to say. Uh, it seems that most people have got the responses in. I think we're waiting for about five responses unless people have given up with the quiz. Um, which, you know, it's your loss. Uh, oh, thank you for all nice comments in the chat. Give me a bit of morale. Um, I have also... There were a couple questions that were the exact same, you know, like with the number issue in the other forms. So, I mean, if you're someone who's extra prepared and has opened them all up before the rounds uh, were ready, maybe, re you know, refresh those. Uh, but obviously, you've not put any answers in unless you're super eager and know the questions. So, I'll give a couple more minutes because I know people... Uh, had stuff to redo. Thanks to me, Ma, for donating. You know, I don't have to thank her as much as the other people. Um, a little question from Adam: Which ancient civilization would have been the most competitive at the twenty-four hours de la Mons? Roman Empire, Aztec Empire, Persian Empire. Or the Doncastrian Empire. It wouldn't have been the Doncastrian Empire because they all chewed tobacco, so they would have had poor lungs. Um, I think the Aztec Empire, for the fact that they ate people, and I'm pretty sure that's a healthy, all-rounded diet. A good, like, paleo diet. If you find people on the floor, you scram them. Uh, thank you to Keith Penn, who says, doing a great job, Harry. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you, Keith. Um... You know, you only have to put up with me for a week, fellas. And gals. I'm not sexist. I love women. My mum's one. Um, 33 responses so far. I'll give until 2033. And then I'm going regardless. Um, which is the deadline because I have to download the responses. But yeah, if anyone's got... I don't know. Film recommendations, TV recommendations. Anyone watch the Epstein documentary? Anyone watch Last Dance? Last Dance is a fantastic documentary. Um, because it's well put together. Anyone watch any of the things that I've recommended? Uh, on the recommendation slide, particularly my stuff. By stuff, I mean the one thing that I tagged on the end because I'm cheeky, and I'm using this to plug me socials. Who would be your big red... What would be your big red chair story in the Graham Norton show? That is a perfect question. Um, one time, as long as there's no police in the chat. One time, I went to a friend's house. Uh, and to watch... Uh, the champion, To watch the, the Liverpool play in the Champions League or something. It was a, No, no, it was... Tottenham versus City in the Champions League. And we, were, we got a bit, you know, had a few drinks or whatever. And I had a mate who was driving home. And I only lived around the corner from the mate's house that we were at. But loads of people wanted to get in the car. So I said, I'll get in the boot. Right. Smartest decision I've ever made. And I'm embarrassed to to say how old I was when I did this. Because it's not young enough to say that. It's not like, you know, it's not young enough for it to be acceptable. But I climbed to the boot of the car. I thought it'd be funny. Uh, and my house was only like a m couple minutes down the road. Um, got in the car you know everyone's laughing I'm in the boot of the car we're all dead, dead clever and funny uh, and then and this was at like one in the morning and the police car sirens go we have to pull over and the policeman walks up and he speaks to my mate and everyone's shaking in the back of the car and I'm in the back of the car silent in the boot of the car in the fetal position going through my mind oh it'd be you know what would I have to say to the police officer if he opens the boot? Bear in mind as well, I think my, my, I was wearing trackies and me, the crack of my my backside was, was starting to show because I was curled up, curled up. So he would have just seen me ass as he opened the boot of the car. Uh, so I thought I'm just going to have to take the hit. I can't have Aiden. I mean, uh, Gary, who was driving the car. I can't have him 
uh, you know, lose his license or anything. I'll take the hit. Uh, and he asks how many people in the car and aid and, you know, blags it. And everyone else is, like, ready to explode. And then he lets us go. And follow. I was the first one being dropped off. And he follows us home. Uh, up until <laughs> Aiden pulled up into my drive. And no one got out the car. And then the policeman went away. And then I hopped out the boot of the car. The end. Um, I hope that was an exciting story for you. And I hope my mum doesn't shout at me. Who is watching this quiz. Um, let's go on to the questions, shall we? Or the answers, sorry. The answers to answer mash. Um, uh, question one. Sorry, I was reading the chat. Then. Question one. Capital of Finland and which Finnish racing driver nicknamed the Iceman won his first and only F1 championship in 2007? Well, the capital of Finland is Helsinki. And the Finnish racing driver is... Kimi Rakkonen so the answer is Helsing Kimi Rakkonen first time you play the, this kind of rounds a lot of people roll their eyes at the answers once you're 11 weeks in like I am um, this is the best round in the entire quiz question number two capital city of Brazil one that might throw a couple of people off who aren't in the know and the question was, which former Neighbours actor divorced from Miley Cyrus in January of this year? Maybe a bit misleading the question. Capital of City of Brazil is Brasilia. And the former Neighbours actor, probably more famous for his roles in Hunger Games and... I don't know what other films. Other such films. And being the brother of Thor. Um, that is Liam Hemsworth. So, the answer is... Brazilian Hemsworth. Genius. Thank you, Harry. I'm brilliant. Question number three. I said I was going to be picky with this one. Uh, the capital city of India is New Delhi. If you put Delhi, it's New Delhi. It's a different city. So, you know, you can't get it. If I couldn't have uh, Isaac Hayes the other week when the answer was chef, then you lot aren't getting Delhi which I saw one, at least one group did when I had to skim through. And credited with inspiring the revival of the old, of the Olympic Games, sorry, which age-old sporting games included events such as the Kaber Toss, with a B, not P, and Weight Throw, that is obviously in the Highlands of Scotland, it is the Highland Games, so that is the New Dell Island Games. Incredible, I know. Question number four. Capital city of Croatia. I did clock on that I did say split while I was talking about my adventures in split, which is either an indication that I'm thick or that the capital city's not split. I think it was both. Um, and beating One Direction in the process, which Liverpoolian singer finished runner-up in the 2010 series of The X Factor? The capital city of Croatia is Zagreb, and the Liverpoolian singer who went on to have little to no fame at all, was Rebecca Ferguson. So it was Zag Rebecca Ferguson. Um, you know, slowly, cl uh, closely losing out to Matt Cardle, who also had very little to no fame in that year. Ooh, question number five. Personal favourite pun of the round. Uh, the capital city of Uruguay is Montevideo. And the question, reaching number one in 11 countries, what is the name of the Buggles' only number one hit song that was Video Killed the Radio Star? So the answer is Montevideo Killed the Radio Star, which wouldn't surprise me. There's a lot of gang-related activity in Montevideo. Question number six. A bit of a hard one. Capital city of Zimbabwe. It's not Bulawayo, great city in Zimbabwe. It is Harare. And starring Ellen Bernstein and Jared Leto, which critically acclaimed film from 2000 tackles heroin addiction? That was Requiem for a Dream. So the answer was Hurrah Requiem for a Dream. Definitely doesn't take the edge off the film when you add Hurrah Re in front of it. Question number seven. The capital city of Australia. It's not Sydney. It's not Melbourne. They built another city to combat that argument between the two cities 
to be the capital city, that was Canberra, or Canberra, I don't know, I know there's a couple Australians, or, you know, part Australians in the chat, they can tell me how it's pronounced, and the question, seen as the messianic figure of Rastafarianism, what was Hail Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia, otherwise known as, quite a convoluted question, but the answer is in the question, the uh, religion, belief system is named after him, so his name was Rastafari, so it's Canberra Rastafari. Um, he did Ras means king in Swah, not Swahili, well, maybe Swahili. Whatever they speak in Ethiopia, um, and Tafari was his first name. If you put his second name, which I do know, I can't remember, but you know, kudos to you. You get the same amount of points though. Uh, Canberra Rastafari, that one. Question number eight. Uh, the capital city of Jamaica is Kingston and played by Margot Robbie in her biopic film which former US Olympic ice skater was banned from competing after an attack on her competitor the film of course is I, Tonya fantastic film uh, the attack on a competitor was by the ex-husband of Tonya Harding so it is Kingston Harding rolls off the tongue Question number nine. Capital city of Nepal. Might not have come to some people. Uh, everyone's heard of it. Capital city of Nepal is Kathmandu. And despite abstaining from royal duties, Meghan Markle holds the title of Duchess of Sussex. So that is Duchess of Sussex, which is a much cooler title. Question number ten. Capital city of Denmark. Bit of an easier one. Maybe if you're if you're up with your capital cities, uh, it's Copenhagen, not Balamori, as the picture might suggest. And containing the stories of Noah and Abraham, what is the first book of the Bible? Of course, Genesis. So that question is Copenhagen Genesis, which is the best name for a band I think I've ever heard. Um, round three. Let me set up for this. I forgot that this was the audio round. Lewis, every week, does a specific um, music round. Last week he did Siri Sings. And probably for the five weeks beforehand he did Siri Sings. Where he got Siri to sing some uh, tunes. Uh, he's played a couple instruments. I'm not as talented as Lewis. But I have done something different where I have reversed some songs. And I'm going to play you a recognisable part of the song, but in reverse, and you have to tell me what the name of the song is. Not the artist, I'm not looking for the artist. I'll look through the chat before... Um, uh, before I go on and play these, because obviously I won't be able to look at the chat. Answer Mash or Smash. I call it Answer Mash, Tony. But I think it's... Lewis calls it Answer Smash. Uh, but I do what I want. I've put my own spin on it. Um... Capital Zimbabwe in a Scooby Doo. Uh, Harari. There you go. Ooh, yes. Let's get more Jamaican accent. Uh, there's a song called Kingston, I think. That's what I was referencing there. That you can play on the radio in GTA 5. Uh, I bet one of them's three lines. Thank God that you didn't actually predict that. But I'm going to play this. Ooh, yeah question one I'll play the audio down the mic if I can get it up I should really be more prepared this is question this is song number one from 1968 hopefully you can hear this down the mic I'll check it after I play the first one and then we'll blitz through them so song number one Ah, yes, the round where I get to awkwardly nod along to the reverse music. I'll check it through the chat and then I'll play just to see that you've heard that right, and then I'll play it one more time. Um, give me a notice in the chat if that is a fine volume. 
so I won't blitz through this about you not being able to hear it. But hopefully that was an easy one to start off with. Um, so if you got that, don't be feeling too good about yourself. Tried to make it an array of um, years as well. Stretching back to the early 60s and then to the 2010s. Um, yeah. I've, I'm not sure how far behind the chat is, but I'm just going to assume that everyone has heard that fine. E. So I'm just going to play the second song so oh no I'll play the first one again Here we go. question one there question two from glorious 2008 nothing went wrong in 2008 especially financially that was question two uh I've seen videos before trying to claim that that song says Hail Lucifer in uh, at that point in the song. So, you know. Perfectly fine. There we go. The chat wasn't loading for me. I'll play that again for you. <laughs> enough question three 1983 great year um and here's this song <laughs> That was song number three. I'll probably only play them once through, um, because you can go back and rewind it if you need, if need be. There was song three, a bit more of an obscure one. This is song number four, 1971. Personal favourite song of mine. Uh, personal favourite song of everyone, I think. And those of you who got that will agree. Mixing up a bit, jumping a couple decades to 2010 with this iconic song. I think that one was quite an easy one as well. Um, but halfway through, uh, what snacks have I got? I had a pack of Terry's chocolate orange, and I thought I'm staring into space while this round's on, so I'll open them so I don't look as autistic. 
I don't think it's working. Um, yep, question number six. Jumping back quite a few decades to 1969. Still a great song though. There you go. Hopefully you got that one. Spreading it right across the decades with song number seven. An iconic part of an iconic song. I'm slowly turning this stream into a mukbang stream, aren't I? I might just eat like a big green tail of a lobster. Um, yeah, hopefully most people got that one. Question eight. I'll do this one and look at the chat again. Easily the most iconic one out of these ten. Um, so hopefully everyone clocks onto that one. Um, join the navy, says Lewis, but in reverse. Classic. Um, Tony Jones, Tony Brown. Sorry, not Tony Jones. Tony Brown seems to be murdering this quiz. Uh, you put the song title down, Adam. Sorry, that's poor for me. Name the song title. As it does say there in the slide. So, you know, maybe like use your common sense or something. Um, but you put the song title down. I'm not being arsy with Adam. We're friends. Um, just because some of the, you know, some people... It, it, it's an extra step, isn't it? If you figure out what the song is in reverse and then you've got to remember your general knowledge as to who sang it it's effort in it i'm being nice it's been a long lockdown that song was from 1975 uh and tom Harris has a very good point i think eight is the same backwards as forwards it does i have been planning this quiz for about a week and i have had reverse versions of songs stuck in my head for a week that I've been trying to sing along to. It's going... Which is basically... It's like speaking in Swedish, isn't it? Shout out to any Swedish players. Ooh, whoops. Question number nine. A big hit in 2012. But what is the name of this song? An absolute bop, if I do say so myself. Um, yeah, it, obviously it's recognisable to me. I've heard it for a week now. 
in reverse. Uh, but hopefully people aren't finding this too odd. Or maybe, hopefully you are. You know, you've got to push yourself. Um, only one left now, so you don't have to put up with music that sounds like you're talking to demons for much longer. Question number 10. Song from 1966. Hopefully you get this one. That's one of the ones that's been stuck in my head the most, I think. Um, but there are your ten reversed songs. Remember, I want the name of the song, not the artist. Shabba. Um, and yeah, if you need to listen to any, go back, reverse it, try and listen to some. I'll give you a bit extra when I'm uh, stopping for a break. But go on the Google form. Hopefully everything's fixed. I think I've fixed every Google form now. But make sure you've answered every question. Make sure you've spelt your team name correctly and make sure you've pressed submit uh, and I'll be waiting patiently. Um, also, put in the comments if you'd like me to play the songs again when I tell the answers or if you want me to just to hurry up a bit. I'll give you that choice. The power's in your hands. Um, but yeah, here's a bit of... Um, the song in the break is called Polish Lager by Penny Lance. So have a listen to that and I'll see you in a bit.
bag of polish, log her and back to my can. Standing in my kitchen till 11 a.m. Sunday nights and I'm still round up and oh, why did you tell her to bring a friend? I can't stop staring at Setty. She is not that into you. Oi oi savoy. How is everyone? Um just looking at the chat now. Uh with Tom that Helena Bonham Carter one is phenomenal. And Louis Theroux did a grounded podcast recently with KSI, which I thought was quite interesting. Not being a massive fan of KSI, but like I don't know. Seeing something that's quite always seems outside of the mainstream be merged with someone that's like so mainstream in terms of Louis through it's quite interesting um and also uh Cameron Telford if you'd saying that I was arsy I didn't mean to come across arsy I was saying it to Adam and Adam is a friend of mine who I'm allowed to be arsy to in my opinion if he has a problem with that we can shut up uh let me check how many forms have come through 34 so I think we're good to go um, Tom just wants the answers, so I'm game to do that. Um, let me get back onto it. So, answers for round number three. I won't do any renditions of the songs either. Question one, name the song title. That song, if you can think back to it was of course Hey Jude by the Beatles the Na 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 song or that bit of the song Um, yeah fantastic song question number two song title from 2008 I'm trying to think remind myself oh that was of course Beyonce uh, single ladies so single ladies is the right answer there Um. If you, uh, I remember when I was about eight, me and my sister used to be obsessed with those videos that would reverse the songs of Beyonce and claim that she was in the Illuminati because the song was about the devil. There are videos on there, if you're curious about that. Single Ladies was the main one. Question number three, song from 1983. That was a bit of the harder one. That's the reason I've done name the song title because you may not have heard the song, the, the artist's, Sorry, but maybe you have. The song title is Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes. Owner of a Lonely Heart. There you go, that's me sing song. Fantastic song. Um, And I think has been sampled by quite a lot of rappers, that song. But don't quote me on that. Um...
Oh, Phil Weaver says, I did crap in that round, but in reverse. Took me a while to read it. Um, uh, question number four. Name the song title from 1971. That song was American Pie by Don McLean. My personal favourite song ever. I think it's the most perfect song. Illustrating... Um, societal change in the 50s and 60s um yeah brilliant song question number five from 2010 hopefully most people got this one uh, especially from the 21st century schizoid man robotic bit that's in reverse at the start that's quite iconic it's of course power by kanye west question number six from 1969 um I think this... Yeah, I do know which song this is. Pardon me. Uh, used in a Quentin Tarantino film. that I forget the name. I forget which Quentin Tarantino film it was used in. But it's a you know iconic song all the less. It's Dusty Springfield with Son of a Preacher Man. So Son of a Preacher Man is the right answer there. Question number seven. Name the song title from 2013. An iconic part of a song... And obviously an iconic voice that goes with it. That was the fast bit of Rap God by Eminem. Rap God is the answer that will get you the all important points there. Question number eight. Uh, name the song title from 1975. I'm trying to remember. Oh, the undisputed, probably most iconic song of all time. Um, You know, also the name of a film that did pretty well but won... Academy Award for editing, which was a bit of a shambles. Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, the Mamma Mia bit of Bohemian Rhapsody, which again, as uh, Tom said, does sound the same backward as it does forward. Question number nine: Name the song title from 2012. Bit of a one-hit wonder for this fella, unless you can name any of his other songs. Um. I didn't hear about him after this song, but this song was huge. Probably the biggest song of the year in 2012. That was Somebody That I Used To Know by Got Ye, featuring Kimber. But no one remembers Kimber. And you don't need any of the artists anyway, so I don't need to stick it on there. Um, Big, sh massive shout out to Rebecca Obermeyer and the Hannah, rest of Hannah Hitchens team for their donation. Uh, fantastic. Uh keep them coming uh, it's going to a fantastic cause uh that i will carry on carry on banging on about uh it would mean so much if umskirt children's hospital could get a bit of money coming their way uh, uh, any drop in the water is huge question number 10 to round this uh round off see what i did there um if you've seen the film the joker or just joker with Joaquin Phoenix in, you will know this song. It's, it's featured prominently uh, by Frank Sinatra itself, himself. Sorry, it's that's life. So I've got my slave downstairs, uh, totting up the scores. I call her mum, um, and hopefully she'll get that boxed off. I'm gonna have a half time break so everyone else can have a breather and not bother about the quiz. Uh, I know I've only just come on to do the answers, but I'm going to tot up the full first half scores so I'm on top of everything so you don't have to wait at the end. So hopefully everyone, you know, go go get a drink. You know, I, I'll be... I'll recoup back here at... Uh, 21.17. Or the quiz will not be starting before then at the very latest so go stretch your legs do whatever and take care so see you in a bit Standing in my kitchen till 11am 
Tim Westward. Sorry for the delay. Um, yeah, bit manic <laughs> to try and mark all the uh, the answers. But some really, really good scores going. Some phenomenal team names as well. Whoever has the team name, um, I'm Luke, I'm five, and my dad's Bruce Lee drives me around in his PPE. If I could give out bonus points, I would. Uh, but I don't, so I won't. Um, let's get right into it, because I'm sure you're all waiting. Uh, stream. So, this round is called Europa League. So, the way Lewis does it, he always mixes it up for the fourth round. It's always a bit of a gimmicky round. Um, the Europa League round is... Uh, you have to use this map. And I'm putting it there in its big version, so you can rewind and look at it. Uh, but it will be on every slide as well, just in a smaller version. Every the answer to every question, uh, at the answer, yeah, the answer to every question this round is on that map. It will be, it will say it is a country on that map, and it says it there. So there are European countries that aren't on that map. Don't go for any of them because they're not there. Uh, like Azerbaijan isn't on that map, so don't don't think it's on that map. There you go. A little clue. Azerbaijan is not one of the answers. Let's get started then. Oh, here's an example. So, what country has won the Eurovision Song Contest the most times? Shout out if you know the answer. That is, of course, Ireland with 13. I don't know why I said, of course. Most people, I thought always thought it was Sweden. Ireland with 13. Um, question of one, though. It's actually worth some points. In which European country was Florence Nightingale born? In which European country was Florence Nightingale born? And to keep with the theme of the round, if you want to float in the chat what European countries you've been to, what European countries you're from, um, I'd like to point out to Yaroslav that his name is on the map uh, next to Moscow. I don't know why. I don't know if that place is named after you, Yaroslav. But more power to you. Um, who's the best manufacturer of post boxes in Vanessa? That's uh, post box Pete. Great post box can slide it in a hole. Uh, fantastically, he will post your letters. Yep. In which European country was Florence Nightingale born? That's your first question. Question number two. The Jacobite Rising of 1745 took place in which country? The Jacobite Rising of 1745 took place in which country? You have a look at the chat here. Yep, if, if anyone, Yaroslav, if you do know the reason why you, your name is next to Moscow. I didn't look up what place that is, um, or why it's called Yaroslav. It must have been named after a fantastic journalist and Sheffield United fan, obviously. Pandering to my audience. Question number three. I'll reread that. The Jacobite Rising of 1745 took place in which country? Question three. Which modern day country used to be called the Holy Roman Empire? Now, I know borders change over time and stuff like that. I want the main country. Don't be finicky. The main country that used to be called the Holy Roman Empire. Um, I mean, if you gave me every country that used to be a part of the Holy Roman Empire. I'm not going to take marks off you. But if there's one country in there that's wrong, I will. 
So which modern day country, European country that's on there, used to be called the Holy Roman Empire? Um, Adam says Syria. Syria is on that map. It's not in Europe. It's not going to be Astapol. So neither Tunisia. Tunisia is not the answer to any one of these questions. Just to make it that little bit easier for you. Question number four. Aside from the United Kingdom, which col European colonial power had the most amount of colonies? So aside from the United Kingdom, which make it too easy, who had, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it was 135 colonies, which is nothing really to be proud of, uh, but it's a thing. Uh, which European colonial power has the second, or had the second most amount? Get you thinking. Question number five. For all you football fans, which country hosted the 1954 World Cup? Which country hosted the 1954 World Cup? I mean, if anyone can tell me in the chat who won that World Cup, I'm pretty sure I know. But I'm not going to embarrass myself on the chat. If anyone wants to have a guess, you'll get major brownie points off me, and it's not spoiling anything. Or is it? I don't think it is. No, I know who who did win it, but I'll let you have your guesses, and I'll tell you who gets it right first, if you fancy. Because I'm just that kind of guy, I like having games. Question number six. Located along the Rhine River, the small town of Vaduz is the capital of which country? So located along the Rhine River, the small town of Vaduz. Is the capital of which country? Like I say, all answers are on the map, right in front of you. Gareth says Brazil won it. I say no, they didn't. Any further takers on who won the 1954 World Cup? So located along the Rhine River, the small town of Vaduz is the capital of which country? Question seven. Where are the Air Guitar World Championships held each year? Short and sweet that question. Where are the Air Guitar World Championships held each year? Um, I've seen photos of it, big massive stage, lights, like an ACDC concert, except very little sound comes out. Where are the Air Guitar World Championships held each year? Tom Ives guesses Uruguay? No. Uh, I think that's getting further away than the actual answer, if that's a clue. Geographically, I mean. That Hungary team was mad as well. Best team to never win it. Lewis is correct. Lewis is the first one to... Oh, no. Adam's right. Adam was the first one right. But Lewis is just better. So Lewis gets the, the kudos for it. Yeah, Adam and Lewis. Uh, West Germany won their first ever World Cup at the 1954 World Cup. But where was it held? Question number eight. Illusionist and escape artist Harry Houdini was born in which country, which European country, before emigrating to the US? Illusionist and escape artist Harry Houdini was born in which country before emigrating to the US? Um, yeah, one of the best to ever do it, Harry Houdini. Yeah, a bit of a magic connoisseur myself. 
I love Puskas, such a big lad. Puskas is an absolute scouser. Puskas w- was so good that he represents two countries at a World Cup. That's how good he was. He was so good for Hungary that Spain essentially signed him. That's how good Puskas was. He was so good that an award was named after him that can be won by a goal that Giroud scores that wasn't even goal of the month. That's how good Puskas was. I travelled well out of way in Budapest to find a statue of Puskas and get a photo with it. It's the same with a photo with the statue of Detective Columbo there too. I would love to do that. Puskas is... I think... I say underrated. He's not really underrated because he's very highly rated, but he doesn't get... In terms of football fans now who don't think about football before a certain era Puskas is oh, to be fair he is clinically underrated really compared to the likes of if you mention football in legends and people bring up Pele and Maradona people don't mention Ferenc Puskas and they should but anyway illusionist and escape artist Harry Houdini was born in which country before emigrating to the US question number 9 home to St. Peter's Basilica which state is recognised as the smallest country in the world? Bit of a bit of an easier one to, to slowly round out round four, the penultimate round. Home to St. Peter's Basilica, which state is recognised as the smallest country in the world? Are you going to say, Lewis, that you went all the way out of your way to St. Peter's Basilica to get a photo with a St. Peter statue? That's the kind of dedication I want from this quiz. Where do they do the air loot championships? I think that's in uh, London, but like 300 years ago. For people who had no fingers because they all dropped off due to like the bubonic plague. They used to pretend to play the loot. Puskas does have the award named after him though. That is a very good point. And maybe I'm just chatting absolute wham. Um But again, it's like, you know, no one brings him up in the conversation of best ever, and they really should, because he was so good. Look at me speaking like I was a Red Star Belgrade season ticket holder. Well, question number nine. Home to St. Peter's Basilica, which state is recognised as the smallest country in the world? And finally, for this round, question number 10. Representing the second largest democratic electorate in the world, where is the European Parliament based? Representing the second largest democratic electorate in the world, where is the European Parliament based? Any journalism students in this quiz may have a bit of an unfair advantage, um, but I am preparing you for your exam next week, so thank me later. Any other, I don't know, talking points people want in the chat? Anything they want to ask about me? I, I mean, I don't know what you'd want, what what you would want to ask about me, but I'm a bit of an expert on me, so I can tell you some stories. You know, because I'm, I'm only here once, and when I'm gone, I'm gone, and you'll miss me. When Lewis is back and doing this quiz properly, without technical faults and stress eating. And you'll go, ah, oh, I really wish I asked Harry what his favourite colour is. I'll ask a question one more time. Representing the second largest democratic electorate in the world. I put that on pause to say a proud, an honour to be message retracted by the message retracted crew. Um... Yeah, it's made my night that. Representing the second largest democratic electorate in the world, where is the European Parliament based? Which country? Not the city, not the city, the country. End of round four. Make sure you've answered every question with the name of a country. Wants to make that really clear. Spelt your team name correctly. There was a team that was called I forgot my team name. 
I thought that was a clever pun. It wasn't. They just genuinely forgot their team name and we had to match them up. Um, for for reference, your team's called Reservoir Dogs, so make sure to put that on the the thought the form this time. Um, and make sure you press submit as well. Uh, yeah, I'll go away dead briefly, get them all sent in, and I'll be right back to do the answers. So, hasta la vista. See you in a bit. Yeah, that's on your test. 
It's your boy. Um, yeah, all the answers are coming through. I think that's all of them. Let me send them off to my willing assistant. Um, I need to check the chat as well. How is everyone doing so far? How am I comparing to Lewis? Feel free to be as harsh as possible. Um, feel free to call me Arsy if you need to. Uh, who's the band playing, says Jake Heath. That's a little band called uh, Pennylands. Uh, it's a song called Polish Lager. Pennylands are sadly not together anymore. But, you know, it's a banging song in my uh, humble opinion. But they're from a little town called Skelmersdale. Yeah. and Or they were. <laughs> I guess they still are. Um, has anyone else caught the tram driving world championships on Eurosport during lockdown I haven't but I can't I, I mean I, if you can explain to me how that works I'd love that because I'm pretty sure they're just driving straight line uh, if they race it's like drag racing that's pretty cool uh, and do they take place in Sheffield uh, Harry come back to shorthand job uh, user slacking without me to be honest which I, I assumed would happen. I do carry the team. Um, but you're looking through your answers and going, I would have got that. I mean, I put the quiz together, so I would have got that. Uh, favourite Italian football player? Anyone but Bonucci. Uh, favourite Italian footballer ever? Uh, oh, Maldini is the obvious... Or, or, see, Perlo as a person... Because of just it, he just exudes just coolness. I'd argue he's the coolest footballer ever. That story about him playing like FIFA and then wake, waking up, he played FIFA all morning and then won the 2006 World Cup and then had a glass of wine. It's just like the suavest thing ever. Um, if it's current Italian football player, um, I don't know. Moise Keane, I, I quite like. Uh, Buffon, just because he's still going. He's about 80. Um, a massive thank you to Lindsay House for your donation. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, the more... I can't be sincere enough. The more money you donate, it means a huge amount to me. And I'm sure it means a huge amount to Lewis as well, that something that he has formed is generating money for these great causes. I mean, Lewis has done a fantastic job over the last 10 weeks. It's mad it's been 10 weeks to, you know, to help out so many good causes um, for, for nothing. It's been unbelievable. Uh, and yeah, to get some money coming over to a cause that I strongly have an affinity with is, it feels quite nice. Um, red or blue? I'd have to say blue. I'd, I'd, I'd uh, see the, the problem is you always base it off football teams, so I'd have to go blue because I'm a Wigan fan and proud. Um, but in terms of, I'd, I'd probably say I suit red better or I wear more red. There you go. Now you 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 come into my life, you understand me. Um, let me get onto the quiz and stop rambling. How about that? So the round four answers for the cleverly named round Europa League. Question one: In which country was Florence Nightingale born? Um, quite a lot of people getting this right. If if you use your I don't want to say use your brain. That sounds really condescending. The clue is in her name. She was named after the place she was born. So she was born in a little place called Florence in Italy. That big boot-looking country there. Um, 
the Jacobite Rising of 1745, or Jacobite Rising, took place in which country? That was, of course, the United Kingdom, if anyone's into history like that. Um, it was to... It was so King Charles could reclaim the crow... The, the, re, reclaim the throne, I think. I, I don't know that much about that era of history. But that's when the Jacobite Rising was. Question number three. Which modern-day country used to be called the Holy Roman Empire? I said that the boundaries for this country has changed. The country sprawled into parts of um, Czechoslovakia or the, or the modern-day Czech Republic. Sprawled into bits of Austria, the Hungary. Um, sprawled into the Netherlands and Belgium and stuff like that. But it's mainly Germany. A couple of people put in Italy and I 100% get why. But Monte country it used to be known as the Holy Roman Empire is Germany, despite being nowhere near Rome. Question number four. Aside from the United Kingdom, which country, which European colonial power had the most amount of colonies? So, lagging about or about 80 colonies behind or 70, 80 colonies behind the UK because we did dominate the world in a horrendous way and steal everything from everyone. Um, I, in my mind, where I always thought it was Spain. It's not Spain, it's Portugal. A lot of, a lot of tiny islands, especially around uh, South America, uh, were explored by Portugal. Port the Portuguese explorers were some of the first. Obviously, Brazil is massively Portuguese. A lot of South America is. Um, there, there you go. Most most colonies, or second most colonies. Question number five: Which country hosted the nineteen fifty four World Cup? A lot of people put Sweden. Sweden hosted the nineteen fifty eight World Cup. I think that was won by by an eighteen year old Pele. Um. The 1954 World Cup was actually hosted in Switzerland and was won by West Germany. Um, Jake Keith said, will you accept Scotland? Yeah, I'll accept, I'll accept Scotland because that's m more specific. Um, uh, after halfway, Disco Fairlow will win the... I mean, you know... Mum, if you if you're totting up the scores, you're not meant to tell people in the chat. But you know, you you do you. Um Question number six. Located along the Rhine River, the small town of Vaduz is the capital of which country? Uh that small country, you can see it on the map, it's not very visible. Small principality of Liechtenstein. If you know your geography, the Rhine River runs out of out of Bavaria and Germany. Yeah, and divides Switzerland and Liechtenstein. Pretty sure. Question number seven: Where are the Air Guitar World Championship held each year? I don't know where the Air Air Lute World Championships are held, but the Air Guitar World Championships are held in Finland. Every single year. Google photos of it. It's quite funny. Question number eight. Illusionist and escape artist Harry Houdini was born in which country before emigrating to the US? That country was Hungary. It moved to the US at quite a young age and went on to become probably the most famous magician in history. After Penn and Teller from Penn and Teller Foolish Fame home to St. Peter's Basilica which state is recognised as the smallest state in the world that is of course r located right there where Rome is the Vatican City home to about a thousand people including some dodgy people that get you know um, held there for safety like Cardinal Pell but we won't go into that question number 10 for for legal reasons, that's a joke because I don't want to get Lewis hate. Question ten: Represent the second largest democratic electorate in the world. Journalism students, where is the European Parliament based? If you, bonus points if you can tell me how many people. Not bonus points. I won't give you any bonus points. 
tell me how many um, members the parliament has. But it is based in Brussels in Belgium. Round five. Hopefully you did all right in that round. Um, round five is the connections round. Lewis does this every week. He'll ask nine questions, nine general knowledge questions. There's no V. You have to look in them. The answers don't have to be European countries. You don't have to mash anything together. It's just general knowledge questions. But then the tenth question will be, what is the connection between all these answers? So the answers might have full words or hidden embedded words or in part of, parts of words that relate to the connection or loosely relate to the connection at the ends. They're all under one umbrella. So let's get started. Round one, question one, sorry, of round five. Founded in 1780, which private all-male dining group getting oh I'm getting uh, clearance from Lewis to call the Catholic Church a bunch of nonsense. I'm Catholic and I 100% endorse that message. My local Catholic priest was a nonce and is now being kept in little place called ample fourth um you know so it, it's dodgy um you're in parliament split across strasbourg and brussels how does that work hmm i'll i'll judge i'll be lenient with your answers because there's a lot of discussion so don't stress out and don't shoot the quiz messenger who may have got some stuff european parliament retracted um, and in terms of the the Holy Roman Empire is now Austria it was I'm guessing it's both Germany and Austria then because if you go back through Germany which again I'll be leaning with I'll have a look at that at the break so don't worry don't stress about it I'll do this round question one founded in 1780 which private all male dining group for Oxford University has former members including Boris Johnson and David Cameron Arguably the wor a worse group than Al Qaeda to Britain. Again, for legal reasons, that is a joke. Founded in 1780, which private all male dining group for Oxford University had former members including Boris Johnson and David Cameron? Question number two Scientifically known as Pagonas, which species of reptile are more commonly named due to the fact the underside of their neck and throat turn black? scientifically known as pagonas which species of reptile are more commonly named due to the fact the underside of their neck and throat turn black i always wanted one as a child it was never allowed one very cool animal as you know eight year old me would believe but what are they more commonly known as well, unless you called them pagonas in which case you went to eat. Crib sheets retracted. Uh, but I don't know question Harry the illustrious leader. Exactly. Wikipedia says Strasbourg. Well if you're on Wikipedia, search for the answers. I'm joking. If I've made the mistake then and I will sort it out, don't worry. Uh yeah. I'll sort it out. <laughs> Scientifically the known as pagodas, which species of reptile are more commonly known due to the fact the underside of their neck and throat turn black? Question three. Known mostly for inventing the motorcycle, German engineer Gottlieb Daimler is also credited with inventing what accessory? If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Known mostly for inventing the motorcycle, German engineer Gottlieb Daimler is also credited with inventing what accessory? Accessory may be a term used loosely. But... 
we thought France had the second most colonies. I'm pretty sh- certain it's Portugal. It goes Portugal, Spain, then France because of all the smaller colonies they had in uh, South America early. According to one source, I can link you to the source. Um, yeah. Please don't go question every answer that I have down for the next because I may have dropped a bollock with that <laughs> with that European Parliament one. Um, but no one's going to get penalised for it or whatever. I'll make sure it all gets checked and sorted out. Um, so try not to worry. Question number four. Oh, sorry. I'll read it again. No, mostly for inventing the motorcycle. German engineer, engineer Gottlieb Daimler is also credited with inventing what? Quote, unquote, accessory. Question four. Eaten with a distinctively long spoon, which dessert is named after the common surname of Dutch migrants in the US? I forgot to mention as well, um, my Twitter handle at Rob O'Harry, R O B B O H A R R Y. If you wanted to DM me guesses at the connection, like Lewis does every week, that's absolutely fine. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you if you're right or wrong, or if you're on the right lines. Um, sometimes Lewis doesn't do it. Sometimes Lewis is quite stringent and uh, doesn't want to have to sift through all of them. Depends how he's feeling. Uh, but I feel indebted to the people who are watching me ramble on instead of Lewis. So feel free to send me a DM. So it's eaten with a distinctively long spoon. Um, which dessert is named after the common surname of Dutch migrants in the US? Remember, you can send over those guesses at the connection if you have an idea. With his wife Linda on keyboard, which band fronted by a former Beatle produced the theme song Live and Let Die for the Bond film of the same name? With his wife Linda on keyboard, which band fronted by a former Beatle produced the theme song Live and Let Die for the Bond film of the same name? Just use the Quizmaster's word as final line. Always gets you out of a lot of bother, I find. Lewis, very kindly, you know, giving me a bit of slack here while I ram his quiz format into the ground. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll double check all those answers. I'm pretty sure, with regarding that France and Portugal colony one, I'm pretty certain it's Portugal. But, you, I'm, you know, you're making me second guess every answer I've given. Uh, regarding the Strasbourg one, I've dropped a bollock there, probably, according to the general consensus. And I'll get that sorted. And if you've got that right, you've got that right. Uh, and if you haven't, then... <sighs> ha 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 ha. We probably have. Um, you said Belgium was the answer. I want points for Belgium. If it's halfy, halfy, Gareth, then points for everyone. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm like Oprah. I'm the Oprah of quizzes. Because I'm desperate for human affection and appreciation and acceptance from the audience who are looking at me going, this isn't Lewis. We want Lewis back. You're not my real dad. And I go, I'm trying my best. Question number six. Hailing from Bradford, magician Stephen Frayne is more commonly known by what stage name? It is really interesting, Adam. I always thought it was Spain. All countries, because you go off language. I did language as a as an A level, so I like you know I'm very interested in language um, and the spread of language. And I just assumed it was Spanish. It was Spain because everyone speaks Spanish. No, it's Portugal. But I mean, South America is like half and half. Por- speaks Portuguese and Spanish anyway and then you have like Guyana who speak English which is weird Um, that's for another day uh, Hailing from Bradford Magician Stephen Frayne is more commonly known by what stage name getting a couple direct messages f- through if anyone else wants to float some guesses Um. 
because I've not got as many as the teams, so I'm not sure if everyone's just super duper confident or no one's got the link. And if everyone's stumped for the link, then I might have to give a hint or something. I don't know. Probably not. I'll do what I want. Uh, question seven. Often referred to as the God's Father of Soul, which living in America singer is touted as the most sampled artist of all time? often referred to as the godfather of soul a title he most certainly deserves which living in america singer is touted as the most sampled artist of all time keep those direct messages coming if you can I'm more than happy to put you in the right direction. Um, I'd, I'd argue some of them, in terms of the link, like pluralization can be a bit of a, a stretch. Uh, if that's any hint, if people are struggling with stuff. Um, as in, you know, yeah. Take, take that as you... It, it, it's one of those ones where if you were going to get it, you'd get it. It doesn't need that finicky stuff. Question 7, often referred to as the Godfather of Soul, which living in America singer is touted as the most sampled artist of all time? Question number 8, with his final film role being in The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassas, which Australian actor is only the second actor to win a posthumous Academy Award? So with his final film role being in The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassas, which Australian actor is is only the second actor to win a posthumous Academy Award. So to clarify, there's been multiple like costume designers and stuff like that who've won Academy Awards after they've died. Uh, this Australian is only the second actor to win a posthumous Academy Award. some people getting it already which is really really good uh, it means that I've done my job correctly uh, in some way Sam Penn there getting it bang on Question 8, with his final film role being in The Imaginary of Dr. Panassas, which Australian actor is only the second actor to win a posthumous Academy Award? Question 9, credited with leading the infamous Boot Room Coaching Staff Collective, which successful Scottish manager of Liverpool Football Club was the last person to manage the club outside of the top flight? More guesses coming in. We'd love to see that. Let me have a look at the chat. France is number two after the UK. Not from the source that I saw. If you can point me in that direction. Lucas, go ahead. But the source that I read said that Portugal had the most. Oh, you guys being all flattering to me in the chat there. Don't worry, you don't have to flatter me too much. You'll have Lewis back next week unless he loses the will to live. Or I've scared you all off. But question nine, credited, credited with leading the infamous Boot Room Coaching Staff Collective, which successful Scottish manager 
of Liverpool Football Club, was the last person to manage the club outside of the top flight. If you know anything about football, you're bound to have heard of this influential person. Um, and question number 10 what is the connection so to clarify to anyone who maybe still is confused or hasn't done this quiz before there'll be uh, well, it, right to, to go off previous ones Lewis did around where the answer was the uh, Apollo moon landings so one of the answers was Houston uh, yeah the, one of the answers was Houston there was I'm trying to, Kennedy for the president. Uh, the answers to the questions, even though they weren't directly referencing the actual thing that links together, they're links. And I've not explained that well, but it makes sense. Or there was one, it was supermarkets. No, it was it was high street shops. One of the answers was NASDAQ, and the link in there was ASDA, A-S-D-A, which is bang in the middle of the word. So they can be embedded as well. So get your thinking cap on. Apparently Portugal is correct. So um, I'll, I'll just look smug into the camera and eat me Terry's chocolate orange. The quiz master is always right, except for when he's wrong about Belgium. Um, but about Portugal, he's always right. COVID-19 says, I wish you healthy days. Thank you, COVID. You should come round more. I've not seen you often. It's been a while. So question 10, what is the connection of all those answers? End of round five, make sure you have answered every single question. Um, spelt your team name correctly and pressed submit. Ideally, keep your team name the same. There's been a couple of people who've forgotten their team name. That's fine. We all make mistakes. But, you know, don't get annoyed when we confuse yours with a team that's not done so well. Um, but, yeah, make sure you've answered every question, spelt your team name correctly, and press submit. I will leave you for a couple minutes to mull over the connection, mull over some answers, rewind if you need to. And that's essentially the end of the quiz. We're on the final straight. Then you don't have to put up with me for that much longer. Um, but yeah, take care and see you in a bit.
Staring at 
Back once again, it's the Renegade Quizmaster. I hope you're all alright. Um, we'll blitz through these answers and then there's going to be a final break before the winner's announced and I, it gives me time for me to crank up um, or oh, sorry, tot up all the answers. Uh, just to check as well. Uh, what, what was, oh yeah, Holy Roman Empire. Definitely Germany. Um, the other ca- the capital was Austria, Vienna, or it was Vienna, uh, but all of Austria, Hungary wasn't. All of Austria wasn't in the Holy Roman Empire, so the main country is Germany. So what I say goes. And for the Brus- the Belgium and France one, um, if you put either, you get a point because I was they meet all the time. I didn't specify they meet every however often in Brussels but the parliament's based in Strasbourg somewhere like that it's in both places at once it's like um, Lindsay Lohan in the parent trap so you know lucky you if you put either you get the point most people put Brussels though so you know I wasn't way off the mark let's get back on to the powerpoint Round five answers for the connection round. Now, I was worried that the connection was going to be quite... Uh, th- there were a lot of people that got it right, so I feel uh, emboldened by the fact that they got it right because I thought some of them might be a bit strenuous in terms of the, you know, pluralization isn't there for all of them. But people got it right, so the quiz master's always right. And Lewis has given me loads of support based on that. <laughs> um... Question number one, founded in 1780, which private all-male dining group for Oxford University has former members including Boris Johnson and David Cameron, as well as I think George Osborne came out of the this club uh, from Oxford University. It was, of course, the Bullington Club. It wasn't of course, it's quite a hard question, but the Bullington Club scientifically known as pagonas which species of reptile are more commonly named due to the fact that the underside of their neck and throat turn black i think most people got this one obviously what i've just described there it looks a bit like a beard it is the bearded dragons or a bearded dragon uh yeah is scientifically known as Pagonas. Question number three, known mostly for inventing the motorcycle, German engineer Gottlieb Daimler is credit, also credited with inventing what accessory? I did say multiple times accessory is a loose term, but I didn't know what else to call it. Um, well, he invented the motorcycle. What else do you need for the motorcycle? You're going to need some motorcycle helmets to wear. Uh, the, the helmet that he first invented was a leather cap um, that provided no safety at all, but I, I don't know. He rocked the style, or 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 Gotti. Question four: Eaten with a distinctively long spoon, which dessert is named after the common surname of Dutch migrants in the U.S.? Um, the dessert with eaten with a long spoon is a type of ice cream sundae named after. The surnames of Dutch migrants is the Knickerbocker Glory. Again, personal favourite of mine at the ice cream van. The icy van that comes around. Get a chocolate Knickerbocker Glory. Question number five. With his band... With, sorry. With his wife, Linda, on keyboard, which band, fronted by a former Beatle, produced the theme song Live and Let Die for the Bond film of the same name? The former Beatle is obviously Paul McCartney. The official band name is Paul McCartney and Wings. If you just put Wings, that's fine. Because um, that's what they were credited as often 
you know, because Paul McCartney's quite big, I didn't have to slap his name on the front. Um, but yeah, the the band was Paul McCartney and Wings. Hailing from Bradford, magician Stephen Frayne is more commonly known by what stage name? Altogether, Dynamo. Um, nice to see Dynamo back on our TV screens, fit and well, because he was quite unwell for quite a while. Um, but yeah, street magician Di- Stephen Frayne, commonly known as Dynamo. Question seven. Often referred to as the Godfather of Soul. Which Living in America singer is touted as the most sampled artist of all time? This artist had almost 70, 70 studio albums in comparison Adele has three, I think. Um, so, you know, he was busy throughout his life. Uh, but the Godfather of the Soul is, of course, James Brown. Question number eight. With his final film role being in The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassas, which Australian actor is only the second actor to win a posthumous Academy Award? Um, bit of a misleading question. The, um, uh, the film The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassas wasn't the film that he won his posthumous Academy Award for. That film was, of course, The Dark Knight, where he played the Joker. The actor is Heath Ledger. Josh Chalice has just got the connection there. Crippling in, crippling and heart sinking moment when you get the connection as soon as the answers start to pop up. Question nine. Credited with leading the infamous Boot Room Coaching Staff Collective, which successful Scottish manager of Liverpool was the last person to manage the club outside of the top flight? Took them on to win three Division One titles, numerous FA Cups, uh, and a UEFA Cup. Uh, he, he sung about at every Liverpool game. They have gates outside of Anfield. There's statues of him, and that is of course Bill Shankly. Um, I think named one of he, he was commemorated by the Royal Mail as one of the top. 10 Britons of our time or something um, massively you know influential and brought Liverpool to what they are today um, so what was the connection so first answer the Bullingdon Club Bull is highlighted there the Bearded Dragon Bear is highlighted there Motorcycle Helmets Mets is highlighted there. Are people starting to get it now. Do people want to put it in the chat? Knickerbocker glory. Knickerbocker is highlighted there. It's getting pretty glaringly obvious now if you know your stuff. Paul McCartney and Wings. Wings was the full connection there. I just wanted to have the answer as Paul McCartney and Wings to maybe throw some people off. Dynamo is the full link there. James Brown. Brown is the link. Heat in Heath Ledger. And Bills in Bill Shankly. So Bull, Bear, Mets, Knickerbocker, Wings, Dynamo, Brown, Heat, and Bills. I said that pluralization was a bit of an issue, but the, look, quite a few people managed to get it. Uh, I think it's one of those ones where if you know your stuff, you will. The Bulls, the Bears, the Mets, the Knickerbockers, the Red Wings, Dynamo, the Browns, Heat, and the Bills. They are American sports teams. The Chicago Bulls, the Chicago Bears, the New York Mets, the New York Knickerbockers, more commonly known as the Knicks, the Detroit Red Wings, Houston Dynamo, Cleveland Browns, the Miami Heat, and the Buffalo Bills. Hopefully, there were quite a few people that got that. Um, I'm guessing some people got it and didn't float a... uh, a message over which is good overconfident um so yeah that is the quiz so give me a couple minutes to work out who's won we're working like a sweatshop downstairs to count everyone's answers on post-it notes so i'm going to be as quick as i possibly can um I, i'm not sure how long i'm going to be but put your feet up and keep an eye out for my ugly mug to pop back on the screen so i hope you have had a great night 
uh, yeah, hopefully I've I've filled some shoes. There were pretty big shoes to fill in Lewis's absence, and I hope that I've done a good job to Lewis, uh, or Lewis is at least happy with the supply teacher that he's got in. Hopefully I wasn't one of those crap supply teachers. But yeah, I'm going to put it on the break now, and take care, and I'll see you in a jiffy.
polish Logger and back to my can Standing in my kitchen till 11 a.m. Sunday nights and I'm still round a bend oh, Why did you tell her to bring a friend? I can't stop staring at Seti She is not an Indian and I don't
Hello, I am very sorry I've made you wait, but I think it is well worth the wait, because something quite extraordinary has unfolded on my first time doing the quiz, and that is the fact that we have a tie break. Let me get the chat back up and see what everyone says about that. But we have a tie break so I'm going to call up um, the captain of both teams and have a series unless you want to nominate an, another person from the team and I'll ask a series of general knowledge questions in a penalty shootout style the same way Lewis did when the glorious shorthand jobs won it a couple weeks back <laughs> so I wasn't prepared for this. I need to... I don't know. I'm going to try and do a conference call over the phone. So you're going to have to bear with me. Because <laughs> I'm freaking out a bit. Um, um Yeah. The I'm, I'll call the first team up now, and he's going to. I really didn't come prepared for this, but this is the most exciting thing that has happened to me all lockdown. So, um, okay, I'm going to call up the first. Team captain winner. Bear with. Hello? Is that the Toby Shaw? Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm just That's mental. We did, definitely didn't get the connection. I'm not expecting this. Uh, well, <laughs> you scored a, an outstanding 46 out of 60. I'm guessing it must be. Okay. Um, be, uh, there were a couple teams on 45, a couple teams on 43. So, yeah, it was heated. One team yeah. got like 12. Uh, but they were in it for the fun. Let me add. So that's so so one yeah so wanking from home got forty six. And yeah. let me add. Oh, th that was something. If we're doing a penalty shootout, do you want to nominate someone else or is it you? Uh, I mean we're doing it over Discord, so they can hear me and shout the answer into my ear. That's alright. There you go. We'll, one -on -one. we can do we can do teams as long as you're not cheating. It's all in fun. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I believe you're not. Uh. Right, I need to find this other number. I'll see if I can conference call it. Um, oh, no. 
gonna have to sift through 36 there we go um, Oh my uh, fucking god. Is that Sophie from Once in a Blue Moon? Yes. Uh, well, you've come drink top. <laughs> oh my god. Don't worry, I'm as panicking I never as you to are. Day. <laughs> um so yeah, so it's, what it's gonna be are you with your team, as in like yeah. speaking to your team or or with your team, yeah. there's gonna be a penalty shootout round, so I'm gonna ask a question to one person, a question to the next person. Oh I'll do a coin toss. Um, okay. And yeah, and I'm you know, so it, it'll be best of five, and then if it's still, um, yeah, best of five, and if it's still tied by then, then it becomes sudden death. Fuck. <laughs> okay. You seem to be handling it very well. I'm, 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 I'm not shaking or anything. Um. <laughs> I have questions from former Zoom quizzes that I just I'm gonna dip into because I'm shitting me kex at the moment. Um, all right, I'll do. A... Am I allowed to like? Are my teammates allowed to help me, or is it just me? I th- yeah, I think we can consult with teammates just because I think it's too complicated if I try and record. Last time Lewis okay. did this, it was just one representative. But as long as you you aren't cheating, as long as it's all in fair game. Because uh, okay. if you do, you go to hell. So and you don't want that to happen. <laughs> Um. Uh, who was the captain of uh, Wanking from Home again? Sorry. Hello. Is he there? He might concede. He might win, Sophie. Yeah, just give it to me. <laughs> I I got so caught up, I forgot who I called first. Toby, Toby, you there? Ooh. Oh no, he's on hold. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> hello? Oh, hello. Sorry, yeah, no, I, I wasn't. I was trying not to listen to the stream. So I, I, so. I, I was speaking to you, but it wasn't a conference call. Are you, can you hear me, Sophie? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Sophie can hear me. Toby can hear me. I'm going to flip a coin. Uh, right. Who wants to go? I don't know. Ladies first. Do you want to say heads or tails, Sophie? Unless we're going full, you know, gender equality. Tails, Tails okay. Are you all right with that, Toby? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. It's Tails. Do you want to go first or second? Yeah. You've not won the full quiz. It's not been settled on a coin toss. Do you want to go first or second? Sophie? Yeah. Go first. Oh, first? First? Okay. First? First. Let's go first. Okay. I'm going to get up other yeah let me get all my questions up and running so this is tense and I don't have to make people wait (laughs) Uh... okay so Sophie okay (laughs) question one in cricket, what is the term used when a batsman is bowled out with the first ball they face? Duck. Correct. Toby. Yeah. Are you shaking? Because I am. No, not really. I'm not. Okay. Um, which song originally by Neil Diamond in 1968, was covered by UB40 in 1983. I mean, to be honest, I don't know one UB40 song, so I'm going to go Red Red Wine. That is correct. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, question two. Sophie. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. 
who was the youngest member of the Beatles? Five, four. Ringo? That is incorrect. It is George oh, no. Harrison. Oh. So, chance to go 2 1 up, Toby. Oh. Okay. Um, oh, I'm trying to find answers to these quiz questions that I've had to get up. <laughs> um, Gillian Anderson plays a therapist in which Netflix show? Oh, it's Sex Education. Correct. Sure. So that is wanking from home, two one up in the penalty shootout. To level it up, Sophie, and once in a blue moon. Um, I wasn't ready for these questions. <laughs> when <laughs> translated, what does karaoke mean in English? When translated, what does karaoke mean in English? Like, like sing along? That is incorrect. It means empty orchestra. Oh. Yeah, you wouldn't have got that. Oki means orchestra, <laughs> Kara means empty. From the, oh, fuck that. Oh, God. Uh, Toby, please don't answer these questions correctly. <laughs> I'll try my best. Toby, <laughs> what, and this is quite important, general knowledge to know, what is Postman Pat's surname? Oh. Is it something like Smith or something? That is incorrect. It's Clifton. Oh, okay. Pat Clifton. So, what's that? Is this going into question four with wanking from home, two one up? So, chance to level it, Sophie. What is the name of Mackenzie Crook's character in the sitcom The Office? What's the name of Mackenzie Crook's character in the sitcom The Office? Five, four, three, two. I have no idea. Phil. <laughs> it's Gareth. Gareth. A chance to win it here, Toby. Yeah. No, no. I think you'd win it here. Um. In which 1991 Tom Petty music video did actor Johnny Depp appear in? Which 1991 Tom Petty music video did actor Johnny Depp appear in? I don't like Tom Petty, so I do not know. (laughs) Do you want to take a guess? Five, four, three... I don't know a song. <laughs> don't know it was song. into the great wide open. It was at the peak of his twenty-one Jump Street fame, I think. Oh, like the eighties. Well, ninety-one, but yeah, like. Oh, wow. yeah. Um. So, once in a blue moon, you have to get this right to stay in. If you don't get it right, you are out of know. the competition. <laughs> So, odds are stocked against. <laughs> so the odds are stocked against, stacked against you. God, I've had one too many to drink to calm my nerves. <laughs> okay, what is the length of an Olympic-sized swimming pool in meters? Fifty. Correct. Okay. Wanking from home. Question number five. If you get this question right, you win. If if you don't, then uh, once the blue moon have the chance to even up and it'll go to a sudden death question that I'll come up with. Um, do you like films, Toby? Uh, occasionally, yeah. 
occasionally, if they can keep my attention. Which catastrophe star makes a cameo in Deadpool 2 as Peter? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Which catastrophe star makes a cameo in Deadpool 2 as Peter? Oh, I'm trying to remember the American guy's name. Oh, what's his face? He was on the Labour advert, wasn't he? Five, four, oh, three, or two... Got an answer? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I've got to. I've got to call it off there. I, I was. I, he was in the Labour advert though. I wasn't trying to give it to you, but he was in the Labour advert though. It's Rob Delaney. Oh crap! Yeah, that's the thing. Mm. Um, Sophie, and oh, and what's the blue moon? If you tie this up, I'll go to a sudden death question where it'll probably be like closest answer wins or whatever. Uh, sorry, I'm thinking of. I'm I'm trying to find a question. <laughs> <laughs> Which 2019 film won the Golden Raspberry Awards for worst film of that year? Which is the the, the award ceremony that's just gone. So, which 2019 film won the Golden Raspberry Award for the worst film in the last uh, Razzies Awards? Five. That is correct. So it is three all. I'm going to... Okay, I have got a question here and I'll do a closest wins it. It's a number... It's a, it's a figure. The closest to, to the right answer wins it. Okay. It's a bit of a long question, but it'll be worth it. Are you, are you both familiar with the rules of golf, by the way? In terms of like how golf is scored, are you both familiar with how golf is scored? So you want to get yeah, like the least amount of points. No. Okay. But how is golf scored? No. How golf... No. Yeah. So how golf is scored? So you want to get the least amount of sh- of shots to be good at golf. Okay. Okay. And if if a if a golf course is seventy two par, like like a full eighteen hole golf course, then you have to get seventy two shot. Do the whole course in seventy two shots to get zero. And that okay. would be that would be par, and then you can get minus points if you could at it. It's very, I'm just right. It's very, it's very easy to get to grips with. So former, so this is the tie break point. Um, and I'll don't tell me straight away, and I'll get you to say it at the same time. Former North Korean supreme leader Kim Jong Il played his first ever round of golf on an 18 hole. 72 par golf course so if you don't understand he has to do the whole 18 holes in 72 shots to get zero how many shots did the north korean government say he allegedly completed it in on his first ever time playing golf at the age of like 70 how many shots did the north korean government say he allegedly completed in? you can confer with whoever and then closest gets the point I'll count you down if you're both ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Sixty-six. Eighteen. Ugh. All right. I have to figure out uh, the difference. Uh, Uh, that the cr- correct answer was thirty-four. So wanking from home wins it. Ah, well done. <laughs> that was heated though, and a little bit of a wee came out. So well done. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Oh, thank you. Yeah, take care. I'll get. I'll be in touch afterwards. Take care. Bye. I'm about to have a cardiac arrest. Now, I better have been streaming. I hope you have enjoyed the quiz. Uh, the winners are uh, Wanking From Home uh, with 
46 points out of 60, and they won it in extra time uh, through a penalty shootout, which is incredible. Um, I'm a couple sides down to get me through the quiz, so forgive me. But yeah, thanks to Lewis for letting me host, and thanks to everyone uh, for taking part, despite me not being the usual quiz master. I hope I did enough to fill such big shoes for a night. Take care and stay safe. Um, if you want to, I don't know, get in touch with me on, on Twitter and Instagram and all that, I'm sure you've seen my social going about. If you want to read any of my articles or my podcasts with cult members and and sports people, go ahead. I have to plug myself at the end. And uh, if you can, donate some money to Ormskirk Children's uh, Hospital. It would mean a lot to me. Uh, thank you so much for everyone for taking part. Uh, sorry if it's been a bit rusty compared to the usual slickness that Lewis, um, you know, runs his well-oiled ship. But uh, thank you and 